First, I wanted to say I'm really sorry because right now I'm coming down with a cold, so I'll probably sound even more nasally than normal. But I'm going to do my best. So, um, hi, I am Jackie from Jackie Gets Lost in a Book Home, and today is Top 5 Wednesday Day. Although, as I'm filming this, it's not technically Wednesday, but I figured I'd film ahead in time in case, you know, I get busy, and I think, um... I think I might be working on Wednesday anyway. I don't know. I'll have to check my schedule. So I figure I'd get it done now and then just schedule when it will go up on Facebook, on YouTube. I was about to say Facebook. It's not a Facebook thing. It is a YouTube thing. So if you are new to Top 5 Wednesday, Top 5 Wednesday is a group um, created by Ginger Reads Laney. And now it's currently hosted by the other creator, Sam for Thoughts on Tomes. Um, you get a topic. And you have to pick the five book-related things that have to do with that topic. Your, your top five. Um, I will post the link to the, the Goodreads group in case you're interested in doing it on, on the Dropbox. So this week's topic is your top five non-book-related sci-fi fantasy shows. Your, your favorite ones, obviously. Unfortunately, I don't have the ones I said. I don't have... The DVDs for them because I always feel weird asking for DVDs for Christmas and birthday and I have a limited income and I am in fact I just started getting an income because I started a job last year um so I can't I have to be careful with my spending and it's just so much easier to you know go to a bookstore and buy a book um but I guess you know although if you think about Christmas and birthday would probably be a better the best time to ask for you know because that way I don't have to spend my own money and someone can get it for me. Not that that's the most important thing. I mean, the most important thing about the holidays is, at least the holidays anyway, is celebrating time with your loved ones. And you happen to get gifts from them, too, for them to show their love. One way for them to show their love, anyway. But, um, so I don't, but I do have one of the ones that I mentioned. So this is in, of course, this is no particular order. Um, this is just the, um, the top five that came into my head. Okay, give me a minute. Um, let me call up the writing document. Um, okay, that's better. That way I can remember which ones I wrote down. Although it shouldn't be that hard because I, these were very, this was the one, one of the easier topics for me to do. Okay, so the first show, number one, is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Not the 1980s movie, but the TV show that was also created by the guy who created the movie, and that was Josh, Joss Whedon. This is a show about a teenage girl who um, slays vampires. And she has started a new school because she got, you know, with her job, with her job and everything as a vampire slayer, she caused a lot of trouble at her old school and then got kicked out, so they had to tra she had to transfer schools. And it's about her, not just her slaying vampires, but her relationship with her um, two best friends, Xander Harris and Willow Rosenberg. And then she has a relationship with the vampire Angel, who is this cursed vampire who killed, who slaughtered, or who killed the a gypsy girl, and then he, the gypsy, her clan cursed, cursed him so that he would have a soul and he would feel, you know, what he did, all the consequences, feel what he, all the pain he caused all of his victims. And he, there's a couple other vampires, like another student vampire that she encounters, a spike, who's kind of like the bad boy, the rebellious one. And at one point in the series, he becomes obsessed and falls in love with Buffy. But of course, Buffy can't love him because he doesn't have a soul and he's done a lot of horrible things. You know? Although that's, although that's a big debate throughout the series. Who's worse, Angel or Spike? I'm, in, I'm Team Spike. But I like Angel too. I'm just not Team, you know, Team Buffy, our main character, and Angel. But I like him as a separate character. So, I just love the show because, first of all, it's, I, mean, I love anything that's fantasy and supernatural. So I, science fiction is a little harder for me to get into, especially with all the science involved. 
but I have gone to a few shows, like, um, my friend finally got me into Next Ge Star Trek's Next Generation. I think that's a really cool show, and I do, one of the shows on this list is a sci-fi, because I felt like I should include at least one sci-fi on this list, but mostly this list consists of fantasy and supernatural. But this, this show, first of all, it really looks at how, you know, it takes, with, with the fantasy element, it looks at the problems of everyday life. Like, the dramas of high school, like dating and, um, you know, having sex for the first time, um, being bullied, all, all the important issues that you deal with as teenagers, but through a fantastical lens, like a supernatural lens, with monsters and vampires and whatnot. Which makes it, I feel like, it makes it really cool and relatable. I mean, I know some people will probably disagree because of the whole supernatural element, but if you really watch it, it really looks at those important things that people go through as they're growing up. It just has, like, mixed monsters mixed in. And then also even, like, up to season four and the rest of the series, it kind of deals, well, season four and five, because six and seven, it doesn't deal with this as much, but it deals with college and what college is like and the stresses of it and having to experience the adult world for the first time. And season six looks at the being an adult and having those responsibilities and, like, Buffy at one point becomes responsible for her younger sister because she gets a younger sister in season five and that's you have to that's a like a weird thing i have to take the time to explain and i don't want to waste time explaining that because this video is a top five wednesday and i need to focus on telling you the other top the other the other four but um you know buffy becomes responsible for her sister and taking care of the house and stuff because something really tragic happens to her mom spoiler alert in which I should have said spoiler alert ahead of time. Um, but it's just, it's such a really cool show. And very funny, you know. I mean, there are some jokes that are dated in the show. Like, references to things that may be more, like, teen. Like, you're thinking, when well, I'm in a teenager, make that kind of joke. Like, I think it's, you, like, you, so there are some comments and references and jokes that they make that are more, like, you, you can tell that it's older people from, like, the generation before the 80s that are writing, making these, these references, that are writing, are writing these references out for the cast members. But other than that, the show is awesome, and Josh Sweeney is a great writer. He's had a lot of, a lot of shows under his belt, but Buffy is still my favorite out of his series. And I definitely recommend it if you're a fantasy, supernatural fan. Okay, number two. Again, another show I don't have in my possession, but that is Supernatural. Um, this show was created by Eric Kripke, um, but he stopped being the head writer of the show after season five. Because originally season five was supposed to be the finale of the show. Um, but then he fans loved it so much that they kept it going. And now they are on season 13, I believe. And they had an ups a new episode last night, which it was really cool. I, was, I didn't actually watch it, but, I mean, it was an episode where they go into the game, the two main characters go into Scoop the World of Scooby-Doo. So, it's, it's a weird, it's, like, it's not just a supernatural fantasy show, but it really mixes a line of things together. Just like, and Buffy does too. Um, like, there was an episode where, um... That, well, they break, like, this one in particular, Supernatural breaks the fourth wall quite a bit. Like, there's one episode where, well, first it's about two brothers who, you know, they're kind of like Buffy and then they fight the evil forces and slay monsters. But vampires aren't, but it's not just focused on vampires, it's focused on all monsters. Um, you know, so the tagline is, um, hunting pe hunting, um, saving people... Hunting things, saving, oh, I should know this, um, saving lives, hunting people, oh, dang, I can't remember, um, or not hunting people, um, hunting monsters, saving lives, something, something like that, I feel bad that I can't remember it, and get it right, say, you know, but anyway, 
Um, you have Dean and Sam. Sam is the kind of more sensitive, open, and understanding one, and Dean is the one that asks questions, kill first, ask questions later. He's kind of the tough one. He's a bit of a flirt. Um, he really likes pie. Um, he's kind of, he's the ladies man between the two of them. And Sam's the nice, charming one. Um, he's the sense of when he's the one who, the knowledge one, the, the one who knows every, who knows a lot of things and does, the re, and appreciates the research. Um, although sometimes they switch the roles and they reverse roles and Dean becomes the more understanding and patient one while Sam is the one. And that, and that really, that happens in season six because something happens to Sam that makes him a little less caring. Um, but anyway, or, no, season, yeah, season six. It's hard to remember sometimes, remember which season, what events happened in which season. And there's actually one episode where they get sent, like, they are being protected because both, because the show deals a lot with angels and demons. And they are being, so I guess demons are their big thing, like how in Buffy, her big thing is vampires. Well, for Supernatural, their big thing is demons. So, um, angels come in by season four, I think. Yeah, season four. And they have to, um, and the angels and demons are coming after them. So, Sam and Dean, one of the angels that's one of their allies, sends them throw a portal into another world, another dimension. And it's this, it's our world. It's in our dimension where Supernatural is a TV show, like here. Like, for us. And they kind of make fun of themselves as actors. And, um, they kind of, their fellow cast members. And it's just a parody of the show itself. And it's really, it's really a funny episode. They do a lot of unique episodes like that that are very different. And the same thing with Buffy. Like, Buffy does, you know, did the, the episode Hush where they didn't, they lost their voices by these evil monsters that will steal the hearts of their victims. Um, and then there was an, a musical episode. Now, Supernatural has not done a musical episode, but it did do an episode where, um, well, here's a little background. So, in, in one of the, in season four, they come across a prophet that is actually an author of the Supernatural books. And I think they do sell the books in stores and stuff, in, in real life. So, um, it's been, you know, it's several seasons later. And they come across a high school, like people are getting people are getting killed at a high school, and they get to the high school and find out that the kids, the drama club, is putting on a production of the supernatural books. So it kind of you know, and there's kind of musical. It's a musical production, so there's a little bit of singing in the um in that episode. There's like a tiny bit. So that's the closest they've ever come to musicals. And actually, the cat, a lot of the cast members, um are capable of singing. I mean, even one of the main guys, Jensen Ackles, who plays Dean, can sing. And, um, so they could do a musical episode, I think. So I think some of them can, can actually sing, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, I would love to see, but maybe that would be too ridiculous and too silly, even for them. But this is just such a, it's such a fun, awesome show that really looks at the relationship between these two brothers. It's so beautiful, and it's kind of nice to have a show that doesn't focus so much on the romance. Because I love romance. I love romance in my, in my fantasy, in my supernatural, I mean, fantasy and sci-fi shows and stories. But sometimes it's nice to take a break, you know, because people will obsess like crazy over that. And... I mean, I do it too, don't get me wrong, so this is not a criticism or anything, I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but I will admit I do the same thing, but it's nice to get a little braver and not focus so much on the romantic interest for the two main characters, but to focus on, I mean, although it, it won't stop people from shipping, because sometimes there, and there's a the character in the show, um, Castiel, who's an angel, that they that Dean has a really close relationship with to the point of where it seems like they're really intimate with each other and people will ship them together, you know. Um which so 
But anyway, but like I said, it's nice to not where it's not the main focus of the storyline. The focus of the storyline is these two brothers and them trying to save the world. And whenever demon or angel is trying, or demonic creature, or not, or like creature, supernatural creature is trying to mess with things. But it's just a really cool show with the relationship with these two brothers. And like Buffy, it deals with a lot of real life issues too, but through the lens of like fantasy and the supernatural elements. And I definitely would recommend it if you haven't, if you hadn't jumped on the train for this show yet. I mean, okay, so next, okay, this one I actually have, and that is. Back to the Future Trilogy um, by Robert, the, well, it's not written by Robert Zemeckis, but he is the director of this trilogy. This is my own little first sci-fi I ever fell in love with. Even, I think, well, no, I think Batman might have, the Batman, the four Batman movies that came out at the end of the 80s into the 90s. I might have watched those before I watched this one. I don't remember. But this is the first one I ever fell in love with. And how it happened, and actually... It happened because, um, first of all, when I was a kid, we went, you know, we did the traditional Disney World trip in Universal, and we went on one of the rides, and of course my parents were familiar with it because this came out when they were teenagers or young adults, and before the Simpson ride was there, it was, um, the Back to the Future ride, where you would ride in the DeLorean, which is the the time machine in the series because this is a time travel series and you know Biff the bad guy the antagonist of the story is trying to you know do something bad and it's up to you to stop Biff from from doing what he what he's doing and the ride and just my dad um, you know I really love the ride and everything I thought it was so cool it became one of my favorites and then afterwards dad my dad told me about the, the movies and so I asked, so before, this was when there were still VHS tapes, so the first time I saw the movies, or at least the th it might have been just the third one. The, fir the third one might have been the first one I actually saw, I actually watched on VHS. My dad got it for me and we watched it. He, he rented it from Blockbusters when Blockbusters still existed. I mean, this was back in the 90s. So um, VHS and Blockbuster was, were still the thing. To the way to watch movies and to rent them. Finally, I got this one years later. Uh, although now there's like other special editions, like there's the Blu-ray edition stuff, and I would love to get those. But my mom would, my parents would probably be like, "Well, you don't need to spend money on that because you already have this one," and they'd probably ask me to get rid of it. But one day I might buy it for myself. But I, this is basically. Like I said, it's a time travel storyline about this kid Marty, you know, he's a high school kid, and he's friends with this mad scientist, Doc Brown, played by Christopher Lloyd. Oh, Marty is played by Michael J. Fox, and he shows him, you know, Doc Brown shows him his latest invention, which is the DeLorean time machine, but um, when they get distracted, because Doc Brown has stolen something from these Lebanites, these Middle Eastern gentlemen, Marty escapes after, you know, unfortunately after he witnesses the doc getting shot, and he escapes, and he ends up activating, accidentally activating the time machine, and he gets set back to when his parents, in the 1950s, when they were, when they were teenagers. And his, he, um, his mom, after his, you know, his grandfather almost runs him over with the car. He meets his mom, who falls in love with him, which I knew is really disturbing, but she does not know it's him. And because of that, the consequences of that is that he and his siblings will start to fade. So it's up to him. So he meets the younger version of Doc Brown, and they work together to stop, make sure that his parents fall in love. But of course, there's is Biff Tannen, who is in love with his mom. And constantly is bullying his dad. And he also, so Marty also has to, you know, deal with Biff as well. It's a really funny movie. It's a fun adventure. Um, if you like, you know, and I, I'm a personal fan of that trope. 
because of this movie, I'm a fan of that trope of where you run into your parents as, you, you know, when they're younger and you have to deal with them as teenagers. There was actually a Disney movie, Disney Disney Channel movie, kind of, about that, where these teenagers, her um, these two teenagers, their parents accidentally invent something that turns them back into, you know, teenagers and they get younger and younger and their kids have to deal with that. It's, it's funny. It's a funny movie. Um, but anyway, this, I definitely wouldn't recommend this for a sci-fi. I mean, unless you just don't like the time travel trope, which is, you know, it's really funny and it's, and the acting is great. You know, I would, I just love this movie, and it holds a special place in my heart forever. You know. Okay, so that's the only one I have in my possession. So the the last two, um, the first one is Charmed, which is a show which is more more fantasy than supernatural, about these three sisters who are witches, and they are the three chosen witches. They're the charmed ones. They're the most powerful witches. And they come from a family of witches. And they, it's their destiny to fight the forces of evil, just like, you know, just like with Buffy, and just like Sam and Dean Winchester, it's super not, the voice from Supernatural. And again, another show that deals with, you know, they, might, they must fight all these demons and monsters and all that kind of stuff. Mostly demons. A few supernatural creatures like fairies, which I am in, I don't like their interpretation of fairies. I didn't like that episode where we encounter them. Not just not a fan. Um let's see what else. There's and of course there's other witches that they come across, like in season five, I think. Um one of the sisters gets a boyfriend that's a witch himself from a wit a family of witches. Um, and they are equivalent to angels as white liners. Um, but it, that is another really good, it's a little lighter and not as dark as Supernatural and Buffy are. It's, well, it's kind of, it's like a lighter version of Buffy, but Buffy is not that dark. But it's not at, but it's still a little darker than Charmed. As far as, like, storytelling is concerned and just the setup of the show and the you know how they explore things on <sighs> um yeah it's about their lives and their relationships with people and having to deal with the secret and they have to keep from other people but then as the series progresses they don't have that's not a big thing anymore the whole secret and everything i mean it is but they don't have to worry about because i mean one of the sisters gets married um one of them, the younger one, my favorite sister, Phoebe, because, the you know, she gets mess mixed in with guys that kind of have to do with the whole supernatural world. Like, she, the love of her, well, she, I mean, he's not the one she ends up with, he's not Endgame, but love of her life is Cole, who is half human, half demon, and he was my favorite, which kind of, which, unfortunately, that relationship did not last and fell apart. Which is really sad because they are my favorite. And I feel like the guy she ends up with in the end, because the series is ended. Again, I apologize, I have I have a cold. But um the guy she ends up with, it's I feel like we didn't get to know him really well. There was only he only was in a handful of episodes. But I I didn't feel any attachment to him. It was kind of disappointing. But, um, you know, at least she, the character's happy. That's what matters. Okay, next, I'm going to skip ahead because I was dwelling too much on Supernatural and Buffy and um, Back to the Future. Well, more Supernatural than Buffy, so. Okay, so the next, the last one I have here, number five, is Ghost Whisper. Sorry, Jennifer Love Hewitt. I don't know who was the original writer of that show. I can't remember. I think it was an, it might have been Aaron Spelling show, which by the way, it, Charmed is an Aaron Spelling show, just so you know. The same guys who like did Seventh Heaven and stuff. Um, but Ghost Whisper is another supernatural late show, but it focused on Ghost, where our main protagonist, Melinda Gordon, can see spirits, and it's up to her to guide the spirits to the light, to heaven. That's basically the premise of the show. She's a married woman. She has friends. Um, she works in an antique shop. It's a small town kind of thing. It kind of reminds me of the town I live in, actually. Except for my town is a little bit smaller than hers. But, or at least the part that I live in. 
but it's just, it's a really cute little show. It's a little sentimental and cheesy at times, but then, um, you could say that for Charm, too. But it's just, it's such a, it's a really cool show, and some of the episodes really deal with some really interesting ghost stories, and I love, that's one of my favorite things is ghost stories when it comes to scary stuff. Like, ghosts and stuff. Although, I also like, you know, I like, even though I'm afraid of them, I also like when they deal with clowns and shows. Like, Supernatural has dealt, has dealt with clowns a couple of times. One of my favorite horror films is It. And favorite horror book is It. By Stephen King. But Ghostbusters, it's so, it's so cool. And just seeing Melinda dealing with all this. And I also, both... Ghost with Bird Charm deal with a storyline where the main character, one of the main characters, has like Belinda has a, has a kid in the last season, and then in Uncharmed, Piper, my second favorite witch of the series, has two boys, and I love that kind of see that kind of story, like the like the protective mother storyline, like she with the mama bear who will do anything to protect her cub, and I love that storyline. I think it's it's really cool and. Unfortunately, Charm, not Charmed, um, Ghost was brought, got cancelled, but at least I think they knew ahead of time because the end, the ending worked, and it felt like a finale, kind of, um, a series finale ending, but it was, a, it was a little heartbreaking that it ended so quickly, but, um, it's really good, it's only four or five seasons, I can't remember, Charmed is eight seasons, Supernatural is, like I said, Supernatural is still going. Buffy is seven, but it's continuing through comic books. Actually, Dark Horse comic books. So if you're interested in the show, and you finish the show, then, you know, check out the comic books at your local bookstore. Unless, of course, they don't sell them, then you might have to go online. That's for Buffy. But, um, Ghostbusters is just so cool, and I, I like and I like Jennifer LaPute as an actress. I mean, she's not the best actress in the world, but I still like her as an actress. Okay, so that was my top five Wednesday. Um, like I said, I will post the Goodreads group if you are interested, whether you want to join the group or you just want to do top five Wednesday. It's up to you. So if you like, um, if you like this video, give it. Be sure to give it a thumbs up. And click subscribe if you haven't already. I will appreciate that. Alright, thank you. Bye.